February the 23rd, 2.15 p.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Uh, um, Mr. Wright, so... What's going on with the case anyway? I am a little confused. Huh? Well, uh, let's see... What is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5 p.m. on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot and the police department's evidence room. What's this and the evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or try to, at least. Alright, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits, but I'm not sure she's going to be much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Right? Uh-huh. Look, we're in this together, right? I'll prove that these thick-rimmed glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go. Science awaits us. February the 23rd, Prosecutor's Office. Underground parking lot. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, it was only a victim who was killed in their evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing, and know it. That oil drum, was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor, was brimming with water. My sister raising evidence at the crime scene? Never. Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just... We're both professional at what we do, and I trust her. Big words for a high school student. Well, whatever, uh, whether there was blood on the floor or not, the water in the oil drum washed it all away. <laughs> Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Uh-huh. What's that grin for? And this situation calls for one thing, and that is luminal testing fluid. Luminal? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But wouldn't the police have already done those tests? Tuh! You're overestimating the police, Phoenix. Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. M me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a minor. I can't even drink yet. We're testing bloodstains with the stuff, not drinking it. Here, look, I'll lend you those glasses. Huh? You had an extra pair of those things? Okay. To test for a blood reaction, just spray the luminal on it. Like this, see? Press enter to spray it on. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. Uh. Alright, and I can only do it here. Uh, let's find some blood stains here. There are blood stains there, definitely. Can examine them. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. So, is this a blood stain? Ah, uh, it's so. Uh. Emma, you're shaking. It's just this is my first time seeing real blood. Scientific investigation in action. Uh, okay, well, we definitely know that this is a blood stain. But doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this? Scientifically? The loca- Well, both of it is a bit odd. I mean, it's not exactly a lot of blood, but the location is more odd, I'd assume. I'd say this could be uh, Lana's wound. Why the bloodstained location, of course? It's elementary. Uh-huh. Why is that elementary? I mean, I would think that if there was a fight, you'd expect some bloodstains here. I suppose you might think that. Come on, Mr. Wright, we're all counting on you. There is something odd about this bloodstain. But if it's not the location of the blood, then maybe... Maybe it's the amount of blood that's odd. I definitely think so. I mean... Look at all the blood on the sole of the victim's shoe. It is pretty strange. They fought here that have to have been more blood than this. Hey, Mr. Wright, I'm going to mark up the floor plans when you find a blood stain, okay? See, I'm pretty handy to have around, right? 
Uh, yeah, and this stuff's pretty handy too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. Luminol testing fluid received from one very proud looking Emma Sky. I can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. And let's drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah. It feels like we're really investigating a crime there, doesn't it? Guess I should give this a spray on anything suspicious. Emma, come here. <laughs> ha! I wonder how that fluid of yours would react to a nice deli box. Miss Star. You only trust your own eyes. Hmm? Not bad, you two. This day-old deli box is on the house. Um, it's a day-old deli box that has raw fish in it. I'd like to say that's not going to be very healthy. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead in doesn't really get my mouth watering. You certainly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but no, no, it's okay. It was my fault. Oh, we know. <laughs> I witnessed everything from the security room right there. But I was afraid that wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied on the witness stand. That's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Sky stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. What I was thinking about um, during the last couple of minutes, what if at this point right here, uh, he's already dead. She's basically just stabbing a corpse. I don't know why she would do that yet, but that's... That might make sense. Ah. I swear it's on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. I know this photograph has something important to tell us, but what? So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Star? Yes, it was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hard the criminal, when they faced me, they cuffed it up. Cuffed it up. They confessed. They babbled like babies. You know. They may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I drag the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect. And before long they called me. The cuff up queen. Oh, and here I thought someone had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. And you were let go, uh, fired. I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case. The SL9 incident. SL9? Wait, she doesn't mean... Alright. Would you mind talking to me about this uh, knife? Um, what do you think about this? The SL9 incident was written on that knife. And on that note, Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know? Really? That knife was evidence from that case, and the murder weapon. It was you, which was feral and very deep. Goodman was killed. As I suspected. SL9 isn't over. Not yet. Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? She probably could, yes. I'll just ask her a couple more things. If you think about it, I could have taken that picture from the guardroom. But even I get flustered sometimes. So you went straight to the scene of the crime? I rushed towards the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. That's when I took this photo, yes. 
In other words, five minutes after the crime? Those five minutes are the whole problem. The hole in my testimony, as it were. The five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You lying was the problem. Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony disregarded before. And I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? Alright. That incident really opened up my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable? To who? Two years ago, it was the biggest case I'd ever handled. The police and the prosecutors were desperate for incisive evidence. So, they didn't solve it? On the contrary, it was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. E executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find decisive evidence. Not a shred. So they executed someone without decisive evidence? What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence of a sort, made up evidence. What? You mean they executed someone who fabricated evidence? And the best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen, others found themselves out of a job. And you were one of those? Myself and one other person you know well. Wait, could it be? Exactly, Detective Jake Marshall. Oops, I mean, Police Department Security Detail Officer Jack Marshall. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined. And then it was over, and he was demoted. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten SL9? There was another side to that case, a hidden side, and that's what we're after now. And no one up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait, those lunches you sell? There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends, boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Star's old boyfriends, how many does she have anyway? Just when all those detectives on SL9 have disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, rookie. What? It seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. A Salesforce steak lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you if you tempt him with this treat. Steak lunch received from Miss Star. Uh, Miss Star? Officer Marshall, is he your. Uh, are you his. Are you g going out? Why do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. I got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me too back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, now he's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I, I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. Alright, I think we've examined everything around here, more or less. Can I actually spray that on more stuff? Spray. Spray it everywhere. Do I have a, a limited amount of spraying I can do? Or can I just literally go through everything? Spray it all. Okay probably isn't more around here however actually wait uh, let me go in one more time oh could you take a look at this you 
Yes? You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Uh, no, but thanks. I didn't even look at it. Hmm, you must have to brew the leaves a long time to get rich flavor like this. We pre-infuse the leaves with steam before brewing. I knew it, so that's the secret to their aroma. Exquisite! The only thing I'm smelling here is waste of time. Don't present it then. Uh, spray it. On the phone. There we go. This blood must be from when Lana. No, my sister isn't a murderer. But she did call you, didn't she? At the time of the crime? And her right hand is bandaged. Hey, just whose side are you on? This has nothing to do with taking sides, so this means that Lana's hand had blood on it. This just keeps getting worse. Alright, anything else? The oil drum, maybe? No, not the oil drum. What about the door? No. This thing? This thing? None, none of this has blood on it. That's okay. Not surprising. Just this? No. None here either. I suppose that's it pretty much. Where exactly is Marshall? Where would you find him? Let's go to the police department entrance for now. February 23rd, police department. Entrance. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurry. I suppose it makes sense. The detective did get killed here after all. So, the evidence room. That's the scene of the crime. According to the pamphlet we got at the front desk. Here it is. She's like a kid in an amusement park. Oh, a real crime scene. Let's go take a look. Okay, so we can go in. By the way, just because I can. Mm. Okay, you never know. How about you? Want some spray? <laughs> All right, let's move into the uh, gas station. February 23rd, evidence room entrance. Guard station. What's with the decor in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room. The scene of the crime? It sure seems that way. Oh. Oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti. They're so prickly. So imposing. It's hard to think straight. If you can't handle the cacti, stay out of the desert. What I want to know is if this is a guard station, where is the guard? Yeah, where is Marshall? I have a feeling I know who he is already. Well, big surprise. Yipes, these sure are prickly. They must be the real deal. I don't think just one big one would be sufficient. These cacti are a lot like my sister, actually. How so? Encased in a cold, rigid shell with spines pointing in every direction. Just like her. Um, not so sure I see the resemblance. It's more an attitude thing than a physical similarity. Yeah, come on, Phoenix. This swinging door makes the place look like some kind of saloon. But look, it's nailed shut. You can't get in that way. Of course not. If you went in through here, the cactus would fall over. Ouch. I'd say it'd be more of a... Yeah, myself. Okay. What about the small cactus here? Texas. Oh, it doesn't really look like Texas. Uh, what about this thing? Look on the floor, a lasso. Hmm. Looks like it's set up to trap something. A trap? Here? Wait, I know. Maybe someone was trying to catch a wild bull in here. But the lasso missed. You sure have an active imagination. It looks like there's a video feed from the evidence room here. There's a light blinking below the monitor. It says recording. I bet we could use this computer to check on who went in and out of there. Yeah, do that then. Uh, 
What else do we have in here? The secu There's a security guard uniform hanging here. It looks more like a costume than a uniform, honestly. Leather jacket, leather pants, a leather... What was that called again? A punchy? A punchy? Pinchy? I don't know, a poochie. Hmm, wait, maybe that wasn't it. It's a poncho, Emma. A poncho. Yep, it's a poncho, but I think I'll keep that information to myself for the time being. Okay, so that was pretty much it. The door then. Jake should appear. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in. It won't open. You thought it'd be open? I think we'd need someone's permission to go in there first. Uh, yeah, but how do we get someone's permission if that someone isn't here? Probably means we have to go somewhere else first to find Marshall. Just quickly checking that I've seen everything, but it does appear that way. So let's go. Uh, February the 23rd, Police Department entrance. This place is charged with frantic energy as always. Please. Huh? What's that? One steak lunch, please. Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe. Now's no time for chit chat, pa pal. I'm a busy man. What I really need is a steak lunch from lunch lad. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. Hmm. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've caught our criminal, now we just need evidence. The criminal, you mean? You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, Paul? On the same day that a, de that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? And the perpetrator, do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect, just arrested them, in fact. It's the biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy turvy. But, Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, Paul, all I know is I need me a steak lunch, pronto. Standing around for you talking isn't gonna fill my belly. Wait, don't leave. If you want to know more, head on down to the detention center, Paul. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. Oh, don't tell me it's Marshall. He ran off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation's off to a running start. Let's move to the detention center then. Wait, I can't. Mm. All right, let's have a look at the department first. February the 23rd, police station. Criminal affairs, department. Wow, everyone looks deadly serious here. Well, there was a vicious murder of a detective down at the police department. Yeah, but the same detective was also killed at the same time in the prosecutor's loss. Ah, uh, it makes my head hurt. Well, first things first. Let's go check out the police department crime scene. Yes, you sound dead set on investigating. But don't mess up or you could wind up dead. I doubt anyone wants more mysteries or dead bodies around here right now. But it doesn't look like anyone's going to help us much either. What about you? That must be the chief of detectives. He's glued to his computer screen. Whoa, detective killed in the evidence room. Tell no one outside the police department. No, I told that old lady at the restaurant everything. Someone's getting a demotion. Oh, what are you looking at? That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. I know, the killer used dry ice. If you put it between the latch and the door, the room could be sealed shut. This is good. I'll win a writer's award for sure. He's not writing a report. He's writing a novel. Alright. Let's move to the detention center. February the 23rd, detention center. Visitor's room. Still, I do feel better about things. A little. I mean, they caught the person who stopped Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I guess they did. Best to not go too far down that road right now. Things will just get confusing. What was that? Sure, that's what I'm saying. Me, a perpetrator? I, I say I was the perpetrator against, sir. That's what I say. Oh, that guy. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, hi. Greetings, sir. Wait, I know who you are. 
Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Officer Meekins, so you're a guard here at the detention center? Nope. No, sir. I'm not, sir. I'm a little lost patrolman, like a little lost lamb, sir. Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report? No, sir. I, uh, how, sh how should I say this? Wait, he is... Is he... You, Officer Meekins, you didn't, did you? Ah! Perpetrator Officer Meekins reporting, sir. What? What? Now this is an unexpected turn of events. Truly is. Sir, I'm a patrolman with general affairs, sir. Sir? Ow, I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. I had some business that day, sir, and so I went to the evidence room, sir. The guard station in front of the room was empty, sir. So, normally there's a guard at the evidence room? That's right, sir. Because evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. Now the security officer... Was none other than Officer Marshall. M Marshall? No, sir. I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A suspicious person, sir. A suspicious person. Yeah! What the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... I... Everything went white. I saw red. I blacked out. And when I came to, I was here in the detention center. How long were you out? Days? Uh, might I ask, what happened to your hand? Sir, there was no one to banish me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. A bandage on his hand? Yeah, I did make that connection, just like Miss Sky. Yet another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first, tell us how you hurt your hand. He probably doesn't even know. Uh, I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir, please don't look at me with those said puppy dog eyes, sir. If you have to label me as perpetrator or victim, sir, then label me victim. Uh, I would, but you happen to be in detention and alive and well at that. Ah, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, yes, sir. If I had to label him as a stranger or a total stranger, then I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. So, you didn't know him? Sir, I work in a tiny department of auto flight or auto creature com creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So, if he was a total stranger, why did you stab him? Sir, I had n n no intention of killing him, sir. No. No, nor do I have any recollection of killing him, sir. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. About your hands, did that happen during the course of the crime? Oh, well, you see, sir. I, uh... Don't you think you should just confess? But, sir, sir, but th there was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do? Sir, to tell the truth, sir, when it happened. When the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir. And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious. The next thing you knew, you were... Huh? Then when I opened my eyes... I was alone in the evidence room, sir. All alone. Alone because... Because Detective Goodman had disappeared. What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand, sir. Oh, the shock. Oh, the sorrow, sir. Can you imagine how I felt? The victim's body disappeared? Hmm, that's some story. Alright. What can I present you with? What about <laughs> this knife? Officer Meekins, this is for you. I'm scared of knife, sir. It's okay, I just wanted you to take a look at it. That's it, sir. Last night, sir. That's the one. I was an apple, sir. In my dream, sir, and I was, I was being peeled. On second floor, you don't have to look at the knife. Hmm, he's overreacting to the knife, but I guess he's been through a lot. What about this photo? Hey, where do you have that? That's... On the day it was taken at the prosecutor's office. The day that Detective Goodman's body was found in the trunk. So this means... This means I'm a free man. Innocent. If this is a dream, sir, then I hope I never wake up. If this is a dream, you'd better wake up right now. 
All right, what else could we have? Does that note tell you anything? Officer Meekins, could you take a look at this? I'm sorry, sir. I'm really sorry, but I have no idea what that is. Maybe you should ask Mr. Ashworth, sir. He's passing the buck, Mr. Wright. It takes a special kind of man to pass the buck to Edgeworth. That's true. Um, Meekins? That's another knife. Officer Meekins, this is for you. Eek, I'm scared of knife, sir. It's okay, I just wanted you to take a look at it. That's it, sir. That's the one. Is that a game error? Because that's clearly a different knife than that one. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I am an attorney. Officer Meekins, have a look at this. Go ahead, sir. Laugh. Laugh at me, sir. Ha 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 ha. Uh huh. I know what we want to say. You're going to tell me how she has one just like it. M me? Why would I? I know, sir. I know. I'm the only one without a girl with matching badges. No way, I'm all alone, all alone. Is that so wrong? Life isn't all about high school sweethearts and youthful romance, sir. Is he talking about those badges on her coat? Hmm. I like to think there's a difference between my badge and a fashion accessory. Yeah, you know. Um, do you think you could take a look at this? Hey, that's it, sir. That's it, that's it. That's what? My head was a blank until this very moment. But sir, now I remember. I remember, sir. You mean you remember what happened? Correct. That card, that card was the cause of it all. This ID card? Exactly, sir. That's exactly it. Nothing could be more exact, sir. Nothing. I'd better pry into this one a little deeper. Interesting. I almost, like, didn't present that to him. Because I didn't think it was important, but apparently it is. What about this? Officer Meekins, could you take a look at this? Alright, he's no idea what that is. I probably should ask Edgeworth in that case. Uh, what about this thing here? Okay, he's no idea what that is either. Alright, um, what about that? Can you tell me what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a little lost patrolman. A, little, a lost little amateur. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman who was in the evidence room. And that's why you thought he looked suspicious. Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much better book so far. That, that, that's right, sir. That's what I've been trying to tell you. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. Did he? Uh, what did he do? That's the thing. Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. What? So I assure you I was as fast as you are right now. So I whipped and left at him. Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him. Do unto to others before they do unto you. My own father's words, sir. What happened then? Well... My ass, sir. Everything went white. When I woke, I was here. Right. So, Officer Meekins, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman, and the victim whom he met at the scene of the crime didn't show his ID card. In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir. That, that's what I wanted to say. That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? But you still ended up here? They told me that it had to be him, sir. On that day at that time, Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly. No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? From the security camera. The crime, the crime, the crime, I swore to stop out. It's there, it's me, it's on tape. You waited until now to tell us this. I'm sorry, really sorry, sir. I'll hand over my badge. I don't deserve it. N n no thanks, I have my own. Well, I guess we'd better go check out the crime scene. That we shall do. Alright, Marshall, are you here yet? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, Mr. Wright. Look who's standing at the chief of detectives' desk. It's police chief Gantz. And you're sure this is all, hmm? You know what it means if there's anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's most likely totally perfect. We checked all of his drawers. Lockers, garbage cans, bags, coat pockets, hats. Under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, inside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away, deal? Y y y yes, sir. We're scared of place again, sir. The chief of detectives looks a little flustered. <laughs> right up, my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh, ho, ho, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? Uh, let's have a talk. Uh, is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, where are they? Oh, you know, they're doing a little in inquiry committee with them. It sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boy since last year. You mean the incident on Gord Lake? It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? Uh, you. You got someone else found guilty in that case, didn't you, right? Uh, right, righto? On karma. And later he was undefeated in his 40 year career. But in court he fixed it so he's caught for forging evidence. Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil right now, oh, you might say. Why they do just about anything to restore their reputation? Now, depending on what that inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. What? It's downright odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their turf too, I mean. There being the prosecutors, I assume. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? Now, now, right? I can't give away all our secrets like that. Well, Phoenix is doing the same thing every time, so you could be a bit lenient. And this in particular, well, it's a little sensitive and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the chief of detectives trap shut. Ah, he was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops. I wonder what it was that he wanted the chief of detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Alright. Discreetly. Oh, so you had to see that. Uh, what exactly did the chief of police want you to do? Well, see over there. That's Goodman's desk. He wanted me to check it for anything that might be a clue. They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So, nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure. Why not? It's not important. You didn't even finish writing it. It's the last item report, but it's only half complete. A last item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February the 21st. Better not make a note of that, just in case. Okay. I should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. Alright. Oh. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favour. Huh? <laughs> well, I never thought the day would come when Raito asked me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. Now, Raito. Actually, I'm uh, sorry, I d d don't need to investigate after all. Raito, please, do I look like a selfish man? Huh? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow $50? I'll give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate the room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show you never know until you ask. And for you, here, you can borrow this. Huh? Hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? It's Bruce's ID card. You can read that right there. Here it says Sergeant Bruce Goodman. That's a special guest for a uh, special card for guests, so don't lose it. Yes, sir. It's an honor. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. 
<laughs> it looks pretty cool on my laptop, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir. Because, sir, we get to go into the evidence room now, sir. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Quite possibly. Alright. Uh, here and then here. And then uh, here. The evidence room is beyond that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gantz. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Uh huh. The card reader's turned off. See? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well. What's made my bambina sky so grey? Officer Marshall. Why does it have to be him? What's that? Why does it have to be him? Look for. As you may have surmised, this here's my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw, that card you got there on your chest. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Yeehaw. Well, what are you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Looks like the card reads is on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with your hombres. You're busy then? I say that. I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us, hombres. Uh, I've got something for you. That smell, ah, reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? Uh, yeah, Miss Star. What's this? What? What's wrong? A Philly steak lunch. I see, I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. That's probably their secret code. If you, like, they've, they've got their little alliance where they're investigating the SL9 incident, and if someone presents you with a, with a steak lunch box, that's your code to say, all right, I'll tell you what you want. All right, Bambina, you win. Ask anything. Finally, it seems, it seems like he's willing to talk. All right. Actually, there's a couple of things I'd like to present you with. Let's start over here. Do you know what that note was for? The sheriffs back in the Wild West didn't place much faith in evidence. About the only thing they trusted was their shooting hand. Uh, this is neither Wild nor West here. Aha, uh -huh, but that and this are two different things entirely. I guess so. Huh? I'm lost. Looks like we need some evidence to get anywhere with this guy. Alright. What about this knife? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's alright. No, no, no. They, they. Okay. Thankfully, I clicked enter, not E. Um, what about this photo? Nope. Alright. Um, what about this note? No, not even the note. Well, that would be it for sure. Then how about uh, this ID card? No? Alright. Is there anything else I could present him with? Mm, not really. So let's have a talk. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the t detention center told us. Ah, they're poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong, calling him meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got the motor from Detective two years ago, well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for a job, you know. So, what were you doing around 5.50 when the murder took place? Well, 
I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed Sippy. Note, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Sippy. There's no need for people here anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Kinda like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? Miss Star told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of the crime. That's all gone now, like drinking hole in a prairie fire. You are still investigating the SL9 incident with Miss Star, aren't you? There was my case. It's all solved on the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case? That's right. The evidence transferals. Etrof was talking about the transferals too. I know that maybe two of the machines in here do. Uh, only two of them? There must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, me and machines as well. I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman, are they on one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard and you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. Yeah, we've got one. That's the card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. Oh. Yeah, makes sense. Now that's Goodman at 514. So this is the ID card record. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambin, I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from self cases in this room. You're kept here under the presiding detective's supervision for two years. So you can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So what happens to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the country, show country sheriff's department. It's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case itself is closed forever, dead. Never to be reopened again, never to be reinvestigated. And that happened to SL9 two days ago. Alright. Can I just present you with uh, this ID card? See this? This is the victim's ID card. Oh, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is 5842189. Officer Marshall, show us that ID card record again. There we go. Look, the fourth number, it's a perfect match. It was used at 514, right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the world. So, when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekin say? Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing. Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. If he had his ID card then, why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekins? Alright, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. Okay. I've got an idea. Maybe I should share this list to other people with ideas here. Okay. Maybe you should. There's four more. Actually, there's three more ideas on there. Okay. 
Let me first uh, go into the evidence room for now. February 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. So this is the evidence room? It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Hyde, but you can't scare me. Eeh! Ooh. S sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts in the hat, Pa. So is it true what I heard? Right, please, do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asked me, sir, can I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's desire. Knock yourself out. Yeah, it's true. So chief of police guns. Will loan anyone 50 bucks? Even me? Oh, so that's what you were talking about? Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. Well, guess what? You got permission from the chief, so now you're a boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you'll want to have this. Evidence room floor plans. Scene of the stabbing of a detective at the PD. Okay. Um. By the way, since you're here right now, how about this ID card record? Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. I heard the rumors. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa, whoa. What is it? That second number. It's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth. What? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. What? What? ID card record updated. Huh. Why would Edgeworth have come to the evidence room? Well, we'll find out about that. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day? That's right. It's an honor. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're a boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're, they're using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation. Again. I'm adamant though. I'm going to take control and put this case to rest. In my own evidence locker, pal. You have a locker in here too, Detective Gumshoe? <laughs> of course. I'm a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, Pa. Only you can open? I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the inquiry committee right now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in the court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fate. Mr. Edgeworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. I mean, he owes us something. This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using the ID card? Well, that's the thing, Pa. ID cards can be lost. Why am I on my third card since entering the force already? Sounds like a lot. Yeah, but even I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprints? Exactly, Pa. The lock for each locker is coded with a fingerprint. So the only locker we can open is our own. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handle, see? The, the handles? On the other side of the handles is a sensor, and if the wrong person touches it... Sip, you get a shock! If that's what happened, my hand would be black and smoking every day. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people in the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Only as the assigned detective's print can unlock it. Indicate the lamp lights up when it's open. Okay. Anything else I can present you with? What about the ID card? That's the victim detective equipment's ID card. 
These days everything's cards and secret numbers. I can never relax. That's only because you always lose your card. I always forget my secret number too. Scary, huh? My face should be ID enough. What's the word coming to? Detective Gumshoe rebe rebel against the system. What about this? Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? Okay, we've read that already. On some other day. Um, what about this here? Detective Goodman's note, and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. But why would evidence for that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left on that case. Mm hmm. Possibly. What about this photo? That's the photo that Miss Star took. Anything you can tell us about it? That Miss Star is quite the lady. Why I remember it was winter. I was 16. She was the only one who ever got me to talk about what happened. 16? That's how old I am now. I wonder what happened. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe wore a trench coat in high school too. Alright, um... Is that... Allow me to one say one thing speaking as a tech. He has got no clue what that is. Post you a piece of evidence I know nothing about or say nothing. Nothing. That's fine. You bet it's fine, Paul. What about these evidence floor plan? Let's have a look at them. Evidence room floor plan. What's spectacularly unspectacular? Alright. Uh, talk. Oh, there we go. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violence? So it was a murder? A serial killing. A serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But a killer made a mistake and Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that to Napa. And this was two years ago? That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight. And started the rumor mill. Rumors? About forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transferal the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was the detective in charge of the SL9 incident, see? So, so, that switchblade knife? The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself? Okay. No, not, don't move. Examine. What do we have here? A, door, a cord, car door. Wow, look at this big pile of junk in the corner. That looks like a car door. There's a pair of handcuffs attached to the frame. Maybe the guy they caught was some sort of escape artist and he got away? Hey, that's one of those human profiles for range testing. He's been shot square in the forehead. Better him than us. Not untrue. This place is stuffed with evidence. Stuffed with dreams. I'm not so sure about the dreams. Hmm. It won't open. Did you really think it would? Hey Paul, security is high tech around here. Can I have a look at all of... Don't... No, I can't. I can look at that one as well, though. Oh, that... I didn't even notice that, really. There's something sticking out of here. Looks like a shirt. I guess that must be evidence for some case. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe put this here. There you go, Paul, making me out to be some kind of slob. I'm not responsible for the evidence here. That's it. I bet that evidence locker was opened recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, the evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff and notifies the detective responsible. How many times have I had him breathing down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe leaves evidence hanging out a lot too. I bet he doesn't tuck in his shirt under that trench coat either. If you're going to talk behind someone's back, don't do it right in front of them, Paul. <laughs> Alright, what do we have here? A metal detector. Oh, those are the things that we got. Um, who gave them to us? Uh, was it Gumshoe himself who gave them to us during the, the Gord Lake case? Some sort of bulky equipment is gathering dust here. 
What a sorry looking fishing pole that is. Oh, that's my personal pole. I never did get around to using it. We have seen that somewhere before. Right, Paul, that's that metal detector. The one that led to the solving of the case out in Gold Lake, remember? Oh, right. Wow, that feels like it was ages ago. And, hmm, I don't think I've seen this one before. Oh, that, that's a book sweeper. I'm sure it will come in handy in solving some case sooner or later. That cheap looking box? You can't judge a person or a machine by their cover. You gotta look at their heart. Uh, okay. What about this? Nope. What about over here, actually? That's the door we just came in through. Looks like you don't need an ID card to get out. I wonder what would happen if Officer Marshall cut the power while we were inside. Let's hope he remembers we're in here. Yep, let's hope. Okay, I'll look at uh, the blood thing later on. I've not forgotten that, I'll just... Well, I don't need the blood thing, like the, the luminal thing for that. Well, what's this? Blood. It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint here. It looks like someone tried to wipe it off. Mr. Wright, what if there are other bloodstains left in the room? Yeah, we'll get to that. We should use your testing fluid to check it out. We'll do that right away. What are these paint buckets up there doing? Uh, there's more here. What is the saw and paint doing here? Since the dawn of time, true art has always been a war against oppression. True art? I noticed that there's blue and yellow paint here. Perhaps we're witnessing the birthplace of the blue badger. Well, you might say this is my studio. Here? Yeah, in the evidence room? Okay. Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective Gumshoe, perhaps? There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of hooligan. That's apparently from THE case. THE case? GSL-9 incident, Paul. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? Another, another piece of SL-9 evidence. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. You want to try to put it back together? Ha, huh, good luck, Paul. That's no job for amateurs. Why, I spent a good three hours in that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. Okay. Uh, let me... S can I not zoom in? Oh, you can rotate this. This looks like a top part, maybe? Uh, Alright, let me have a look. This belongs like that, I assume. Um... That looks like it could fit. There we go. How about... Mm, that right here. Okay. I'm absolutely terrible at this, by the way, so I apologize if I take a bit longer than you should do. That fits here. Uh... No, not like this, obviously. No, that doesn't fit either. Um, possibly... Like this? No. This? Yeah, apparently. Um, I can barely even see. Uh... this. Yeah, there we go. This. Not this. Okay. What if I rotate it? No. Uh, this. Yes. Two more parts. 
no, obviously not like this. Um, doesn't really look like it fits. Like this? No, obviously not. No, uh, that way. Yep. And that's the last remaining part. No, nope, no. Nope. Like this, obviously. And there's one piece missing. Uh huh. Well, I think we did it, but some of the pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far too in <laughs> two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. Were some pieces stolen? I bet they were missing to begin with. Still. It doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. It looks very weird. That's what it does. And there's blood on it too. I kind of understand how it got broken. Unstable jar added to the core record. Okay. Is there anything else that I have to... What about this? Look, this one's open. And the red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is coated with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker? Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. We must have taken the contents elsewhere. What about this thing in between here? No? Alright. Um, what about... Okay, we've looked at that. If you put these pieces together, it makes a jar. There are two things that bother me. One, why are some of the pieces missing? Two, doesn't that seem a little unstable? No wonder it broke. I'll make sure to remember that next time I make a jar. Alright. So we've looked at everything in here. Let's get to spraying. Alright, spray at this thing first. I knew it. This is someone's right hand print. What? What's the matter, detective? This, this locker. It's mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me. When they come to take me away, promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pass? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor plans. I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. What? But you're a detective. Well, he's got experience in not being able to trust the police. What about over here? Any blood? Yeah, there's lots of blood down here. That's more akin to the, like, to the amount of blood I would expect at a murder scene. That must have been one massive pool of blood. Never seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodwin was actually an alien? I knew that was going there. This proves that something really happened in front of this locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plans. Hey, if you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. Yeah, Phoenix, why did you ask? What about on these paint cans? No. Nope. Anywhere else in this room. Go on, spray. Everywhere. Uh, nope, nothing around here. Alright, the one thing I'm suspecting something might actually be. Uh, the one place where something might be is here. Yeah, there we go. Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for the murderer to touch the spot if you fled out the door. This just might be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there, Paul. What, this? It's called luminal testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. Where do you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I'd better chop this down on the floor plans. Yep. And the most amazing part about that spray is that it never runs out. Any blood on the door? No? That's kind of surprising. I suspect that's everything. I don't really think why there would be any blood elsewhere. But you can never be sure, and if you can spray everywhere anyway. 
Alright. Well, is there anything we can present him with? We might as well present him with that thing. Allow me to do Okay, yeah. What about the evidence locker? You can't open the lockers if your fingerprint doesn't match. If you can open it, they'll give you 50 cents. Note, the police department lacks faith in this lock system. After all, Detective Goodman was stopped here after opening his locker. But at the same time, he was found dead over at the prosecutor's office. Okay. Nothing to talk about with him. Uh, is there anything I'd like to talk about with you? How about that jar? The sheriff's back in the wild ways didn't place much faith in evidence. Okay. Yep, 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 I get it. Uh, what about the locker? Yeah, yeah, okay, he's not useful for anything. I get it. Nope. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I can check it. Um, it's marked down here. Probably... No. Okay. Time to ignore him. Uh, what about here? Anyone here? No. Uh, let's move on. Where do we move? Uh, Edgeworth, probably. We haven't talked to him yet. Uh, how do we get there anyway? Uh, let's go here first. Maybe I can present you with some stuff while we're here. Could you take a look at this? Uh, yeah, that's... Apparently nothing important. Do you know about any of these IDs? Nope, you don't. Alright, fair enough, pretend I didn't ask. Okay, then let's move somewhere else. There we go. February the 23rd, High Prosecutor's Office, Room 1202. Well, this place, place is as classy today as it was yesterday. And I'm sure it'll still be just as classy tomorrow, Emma. Incidentally, Edward's not here. I'm sure he's off doing important investigations. I hope that's what he's doing. I guess we'll have to come back. Hmm. Alright, we'll have to come back here. So where do we have to go now? What about the detention center? Do you have anything to say about this? Officer Meekins, could you take a look at this? I'm sorry, sir. Really, you have no, you don't even know about ID cards. Alright, what about this unstable jar? You seeing that? Nope. Okay. Nope. Uh, got the Alice. I can rotate this around. Can I investigate anything on it? I can. Hey look, they're hard to make out, but there are some dark red stains here. Hmm, looks like blood. You think the tech of Goodman's blood somehow got on this when he was stabbed? Not likely. This blood looks like it's been there from here for months, maybe longer. This jar was evidence in the SL9 incident. That might be when the blood got on it. Yeah, that might be it. Uh, there's nothing else about this jar that I can examine, I think. Actually, yes. Huh? This thing doesn't have a bottom. That's weird. I wonder which side is up. Better yet. What's the purpose of a bottomless jar? At least it doesn't collect dust inside, right? It still does. Uh, it looks terrible both ways. But I'm still pretty sure that's up. Alright. Have to talk about it with you? No. Uh, where do we go now then? Anything you have to say? Well, where should we begin? Oh well, isn't it obvious? We should begin with that, you know? That thing! The mystery of the victim, I guess. How could one man, Detective Goodman, be killed in two places simultaneously? Oh well, you see. We should go to the police department, the evidence room, was it? Uh, I'm not being very useful here, am I? No, no, you're being very helpful. Yeah, I probably don't have to talk to her. 
you have anything to say about any of this? What about the jar? Here, see this? Ah, I've noticed that defense attorneys have a tendency to want to show people things. What is this, a behavioral study of lawyers? Yeah, we've had that before. Alright, probably not going to show her stuff then. Um, how do we get to the police department? Criminal affairs department, there we go. There's nothing I can do here either. Uh, yeah? Okay. Oh, what a crafty trick. That gunshot wound was a fake. Oh, that gunshot was a fake. This is good. No one will expect a cassette tape in this day and age. He's not writing a rapport. He's writing a novel. A different novel this time. These are the detective's desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expect. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. Okay. Alright, where do we go then? Uh, the detention center? No. There's nothing I have to show him that I haven't shown him already. I don't think. So where do we go? Back to here? I've presented her with everything, I'm pretty sure. Uh, she said she doesn't know anything about that. So, no. Any talk? No. Alright. I'm pretty sure I have sprayed everything in here, but just... Oh. No, don't. Oh. She's written her name on it. Someone used a marker to write the name of this. Emma Sky. Don't tell me you bring this with you everywhere you go. Well, you never know where something might go down. Just what kind of a world do you think we live in? A world where you need luminal fluid everywhere. Uh, spray it somewhere. I've sprayed it everywhere, I think. Uh, where could you spray this? Like the one thing I wanted to spray it on that I haven't... That I, well, I've done so a couple of times are these barrels. Nothing over here either. Oh. Uh, yeah, I forgot to slide it over. I mean, I didn't forget, I just pressed the wrong button. There we go. Is there nothing... No other... Uh, no other bloods... Uh, no other blood stains anywhere around here. Over here on the, on the fence, maybe? No? Alright. Didn't think so. Hmm. Edgeworth's not here. But maybe. There's blood somewhere. I doubt it, but... Oh, there he is. Huh. What? It looks like some blood has dripped down here. Judging by the amount, my guess is it's, is it's from a nosebleed. A nosebleed, huh? Maybe in his wrath? Mr. Etra slapped someone for their incompetence. Why does Detective Gumshoe's face come to mind? Okay. Anywhere else? Uh, nothing around here. Nope. No other blood stains around here. Okay. Anything I can examine here. Work desk, yep. Yep. We've had that before. Uh, there's probably nothing new in here. Yeah, we've examined all of that. What about this? Oh, it's the, w the window. Okay. Yeah, we've examined everything here. What else could we do? Uh, is there any blood in the office? I mean, at this point, I know this has nothing to do with the... Uh, with the crime scene. Or the crime in of itself, but... Might as well. Nope. No blood around here. 
Uh, hmm. Is there anyone here? No, there's not. Um, actually, I haven't sprayed around here. Nope, don't examine it. Spray with it. Surely there has to be some blood around here as well. Nope, it doesn't look like it. No blood in this room. Oh, blood on the cactus. Wow, we got a reaction. Hmm, there's clearly blood around the spines here. This room's pretty messy. Someone must have tripped over something and planted their head right in these spines. I think that might be more painful than being murdered. Potentially. Anything on the costumes? Nope. Nothing. Uh, is there anything I can present you with? I think I've pretty much presented him with most things. Yep. I think I'm stuck again. What could I do? Presented him with a knife earlier. Oh, what about this? No. Not this either. It doesn't help that his his uh, statement or what he says after I present him with something is so long. What if I present Gumshoe with this once more? Now that I've checked out the blood. Okay, no. It doesn't help. Where's Edgeworth when you need him? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about this? Yeah, we've had that. Nope. Stop it. Uh, yeah, we've had that too. Nope. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, Paul. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently it's forgotten. Okay. I really doubt that was the thing I needed to show him to get Edgeworth to appear. But I'll check it out. Maybe it was. Nope, he's still not here. I think, I mean, I've looked and done absolutely everything I can think of right now. So I think I'm just going to have to look it up again. I really don't like doing this, but otherwise we're going to be here for another hour with me trying to show everything to everyone. So, yep, I'll be right back. Okay. Let's go to the evidence room again. Where is it? Through the guard station. Into the evidence room. Slide over here. Examine. How did I not see it? I mean I saw it obviously, but how did it not how did I not go over it and see the, the magnifying glass turn yellow? Someone left a glove here, but only one. Detective Gumshoe, maybe? There you go, Paul, making me out to be some kind of absent minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know? You mean SL9? It does have a tag on it. Rubber glove added to the core record. Hey, Paul, look at the time. Was there something you needed to be going to? It's just that Mr. Edgeworth's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to give, give them my report for the day. It might help, you know? 
A report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Mr. Redfield you're talking about. I'm sure you can use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, Paul. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. Okay, so now Edgeworth appears. Uh, okay. Uh, we need to go to the police department. We need to go to the underground parking lot. We need to go to the high prosecutor's office. February the 23rd, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. Ah, guests, my apologies. Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave, so long. Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. He has the hotel bring him tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking... Oh, by the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah, oh, yes. He brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently, a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Uh, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a soul on him. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You are lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened. They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes. Any further investigation for this case will be directed by the Chief of Police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you, why? All along I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still. Wow, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Alright. We've got some things to show you, Edgeworth. Uh, right, please. I'm the prosecutor in this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on it to you. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. Whose side are you on anyway? Maybe if I just show him my best evidence, I can get some reaction out of him. What about this thing? Oh, right. I'd better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage. Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go by Chief Gaunt, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about this other case. I'd better make a note of it. Unrelated evidence. Stubborn as always. I told you, this has nothing to do with the current case. We've got three pages of evidence. Well, two and more pages of evidence now. What about this? 
Okay, not yet. Better evidence. Um, what about this? Uh, what about this thing? Nope. Right. What about the... Uh, well, that's not really good. I mean... Wait, okay. I mean, show him good. He's seen that. It was in court. Why the hell do I have to show him that? It all has to do with that case you were on, the SL69 incident. And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You are the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. He must be talking about his father's murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth, why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigation was the deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gantz. That wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too then. He was a top officer and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Why well, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I want to know is why was it Ch Deputy Chief of Police on the investigation? In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't? Of course not, I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? What? If you were still studying forensic science. Huh? Yes, of course. Why just today, Mr. Ray and I were using this? Luminal testing fluid, huh? Well then, you might have use for this. Aluminium powder for taking fingerprints. It's been chemi chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks. How about giving these to Detective Gumshoe as well? Fingerprinting set and fingerprint file received. Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I do seem to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. Yep. You do remember correctly. Let's make our way all the way back to the evidence room. Through the guard station into here. February the 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this blood on the detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clearest print. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Well, the thumb left the clearest print. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. Emma's starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminium powder around. Huh? How do you do that? With enter, see? Ah, it looks like that did the trick. The aluminium powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With E. Exciting, I know. Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. See? Wow, that looks like fun. It might take some getting used to though. It's fine. It won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder and thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Reich. I guess I'd better give it a try. Okay, dust. Uh, this is positioned... Uh, very weirdly. 
Okay. Ah. The, this is bigger than I thought it would be. Alright. Just me. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is bright. Uh huh, you did it. You found one. But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm, now that you mention I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this handprint must have worn gloves. Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door again closely. It seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. Yeah, yeah, here. Dust, 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 dust. Lots of dust. Now blue. Oh, that's a clear print. Do I need to dust more? Dust, 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 dust. Make everything white. There you go. Yay, your print's so clear, it's dazzling. D dazzling? Anyway, this print took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet? This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Alright, where is our list? Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth and point out the person you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it was? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints would be most likely found in this evidence locker? Well, the person whose locker it is. Uh. Oh god. Um. This one. Yes. Gumshoes. Comparison complete. Match found. Uh huh. So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking so what. Okay, so we came up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. Alright, slide over here. This is where you got a luminal fluid reaction, right? Right, there was a handprint here. Okay, want to try using this? There go her eyes sparkling again. Check for prints. Okay, let's check for prints. That's the spirit. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Would you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? Don't ask me. Anyway, we must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the bloody hand. Uh, prints left other than those by the... Well... Uh, I can't see anything that stands out. On the scanner, I guess? No. Let me just go through because yeah, I, I just can't see anything. And I can't dust anything here. Let me just do it like this then. Maybe I'll eventually find the right place. It's not turning yellow. Uh, no. There's nothing here. So why exactly are we investigating this? Why are we looking around here? 
I'll do it one more time thoroughly from the top to bottom here. Oh! There? Why there? There's nothing here. Apparently that's where it was. I couldn't see it. Make everything white again. Hmm. Hmm, I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. What do you mean a different finger? Is that a different finger? I don't know, I can't tell. Hmm. Okay, that's just the same. Okay. So I guess if that's the thumb, then the, uh, the, the, you know, uh, where would it be? Let's just move through here again. I'll, ev I'll eventually find it. Hopefully. I don't know where it is. Uh, nope, not around here. I've got a difficult time thinking about what this is. Like, is that the thumb or is that the small... F I, d I don't know what fingers are called in English. Wait, does it... There's a ring finger, there's an index finger, there's a middle finger, and there's a thumb. What's this? Oh, the pinky. Uh, so that's the... I don't know, is that the thumb or is that the pinky? Or is that how you call the toe, the small one? I don't know. Uh, so where's the fifth fingerprint, probably? Is it up here? Yeah, it is up here. Okay. Go and dusting. That's better. It's apparently not good enough for Emma yet. Come on. It's clear as day. Surely this is enough, right? There you go. Uh, this... I mean, this does look very similar. Uh, oh, it's Jake's. Jake's and Damon's prints look very similar. But yeah, that's definitely Jake's. Comparison complete. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Uh, Officer Jack Marshall? Marshall's fingerprints added to the court record. That's, that's got to be a coincidence. He's not involved in a crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction, the blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh, oh! So we have Jack Marshall's fingerprints on a white blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall? It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you'd call decisive evidence. I, I don't believe it. To be continued. <laughs>